Hi everyone, welcome back and I hope you are doing well. In today's video, I'm going to try to demonstrate the effects of the buffer size and latency in your audio interface and the ASIO driver for Windows. So when I talk about ASIO buffer size and latency, what am I talking about? Well, in front of me, you can see I've got Luna from Universal Audio, the free DAW. And I thought it's a great example as I'm testing the software to demonstrate this setting or feature that you may not be aware of, especially when you are recording live instruments, live tracks, regardless they are guitars, vocals, or synthesizers, and especially if you are running synthesizers and MIDI notes within your DAW. This is not just uh, relevant to Luna, it's for every DAW. So depending which DAW you are using, make sure you check these settings and when you watch the demonstration it will make sense to you why it's important. So we go to the settings and at the moment I'm just using my Yamaha USB audio which is the AG03, the smallest mixer audio interface that I've been using for God knows how long and it works perfectly. I love it. So let's have a look at the ASIO control panel. Here you can see I'm using standard mode, I'm using buffer size of 128 samples and that will give me input latency of 6.8 or 6.9 milliseconds and output latency of 7.9 milliseconds. That's what you are looking at. So about 14 milliseconds round trip if we needed to calculate. But when we are recording vocals and when we are recording live instruments through the microphone input or the line level input of our audio interface, we are looking at the input latency. And when we change the buffer size, if we go into, let's say, 1024 samples, now we have even longer latency. So it will take 26.5 milliseconds from the time the audio reaches from the input of the interface into your DAW before it gets recorded. So it'll be late. And that's why when you enable a monitoring of your track while you are recording, you will hear some phasey or chorusy or, depending on the latency size, a delay effect as you are recording. So let's put it down back to 128 because this audio interface will support down to 128, including my screen capture and audio capture at the same time. Now, my advice, and this is my personal advice, because every person's situation is different. You might have a different audio interface that can support a higher or lower buffer size. Go to the lowest buffer size when you are recording until you don't get any clicks and uh, noise uh, and crackles and so on. Move up to the next size. Even though you are, if you are not recording through a VST instrument. Let's say if you are recording a guitar and you want your guitar effects as a VST instrument, like guitar amp sim and cabinet sim, and you want to be able to listen to it, of course, lower the latency, the better you'll be able to play because there won't be any latency from the time you pluck your guitar and into listening to it. Same goes with vocals, same goes with playing any synthesizer, because by the time you press the keys, and if there's any delay, the sound will come later and they will sort of affect your playing, your singing. So use the lowest buffer size. Now, apart from that reason, there is another reason why you should record with lower buffer size. And only once you've finished all of your recording, then you increase your buffer size to the highest that you want. Because it will not matter. It will actually work better because the higher the buffer size, the more plugins you can have without any jitter, without any uh, crackling or audio DAW crashing. So low buffer size when you're recording, as high as you can when you are mixing. So let me show you another important reason why you, why you should record at a lower buffer size. Let's go back into my project. I have my keyboard synthesizer connected through MIDI and it's linked to Luna. So whenever I press play, my drum machine will start playing. Now, there is no MIDI notes here. It's just syncing to MIDI clock. Everything is programmed in my drum machine. 
the whole song is sequenced in my drum machine, in this case, my arranger keyboard. So whenever I press play, it will start playing. Let's have a listen. Okay, so I can press play again. And it will play for me. So let's say I want to record the audio of my drum machine as an audio track in my DAW. So I can just arm the track. I've got a track called drums. I press record. My drum machine will start playing and I can record the audio in my DAW. Right, I've recorded it. So let's zoom in and find out how well the timing is. Let me make this bigger. So you can see my bits are pretty much right on the grid. It's very close to the grid. That's because the time from the grid, remember the MIDI clock is on the grid. So it, the time that it takes for the MIDI clock to go, and by the time the audio from my drum machine appears at the input of my audio interface, gets analog to digital converted and appear and record in my DAW, that's the time latency. That is about six or seven milliseconds. Yes? Okay. So let's now increase our buffer size and try that again. Let's add a new track. Let's call it Drums 2. Stereo. OK. Let's go back to my setting and change to 1024. Right, so let's give another try now. Let's uh, play it first. Let's just, I'm just going to mute this first track. Yep, so it's all playing. MIDI sync is good. Arm for recording, and let's record. Okay, I'm sure you can visually see that they're not, they're not in line anymore. You can see it's way delayed. It's delayed so much that actually it's not appearing anymore. It started recording way later. It's missing the first part of my drum kick. And that's the latency we're seeing from there to there. Now, how you may think this is a problem. It's not a problem if everybody is playing live band and they're all following a click track. And if you have big buffer, that means everybody is delayed for the same amount and everybody is in sync. The problem starts when you start to add VST instruments, which are playing MIDI notes or samples and loops, which are linked to the grid and synchronized to the grid, they'll be out of sync because MIDI notes are synced to the grid and the sound from the VSDI instrument that you add, whether if it's a drum or whether if it's uh, any other instrument, synths, piano, they be right on the grid because it's within the DAW. There is no latency there. And even if there is any latency, that is automatically compensated by the DAW. But when you are recording an outside source, an audio source in to your audio interface and into your DAW, the buffer size will create latency and it will be out of sync. Well, I hope you learned something new. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio, guys.